Uh, in the previous video, I said there's a couple of ways to find the output of a system. One is using Laplace, the other way is using convolution. I should have mentioned that these two are equivalent because convolution is commutative, just like this multiplication is commutative. Um, I don't think we're ever going to do this in this course. Um, if you want more about convolution, and, uh, and there's actually a way to, to derive things starting with the impulse response. You can think of the signals as sort of the limiting, it's an infinite number of impulse responses. I won't get into that. If you, but if you look, if you go to my website and look at my signals and system course, um, there's another, what the heck? There's another way to uh, derive all the impulse response and transfer function type stuff in that court. But for now, we're going to be using the, the Laplace method. So let me do an example or two of that, um, which is really kind of a review of Laplace. You don't want to go through that. Uh, you don't have to, but for those of you rusty who just want a little bit of review of Laplace, First, you need to have handy a Laplace table. Uh, usually any, any, any textbook on differential equations or engineering mathematics should have such a table. Uh, here's an example of a fairly abbreviated table. Um, I won't get into that. I'm gonna use that. I don't have it all memorized. And you don't need to have it memorized. Some of the more common ones you'll get sort of memorized just by practice. Anyway, so let's say we want to find the output of a system given a transfer function. So here our problem is to find y, the output in the time domain, when the input r is a unit step. And we assume the system starts at rest. Also, what is y? out at time goes to infinity. So anyway, we're given the transfer function. So the output is the transfer function times the input. Input is a unit step. What is the Laplace transform of the unit step? One over S. Here's the one over S. Multiply these two guys out and factor this denominator, you get this. And this is partial fraction expansion, it's kind of the bad part of the Laplace transform. You break this up into sums. Some kind of constant. In this case, we have all real factors: zero, minus ten, minus thirty. I, I should have said roots. All real simple roots: zero, minus ten, minus thirty. You put a constant over each of B over S, B over S plus 10, another constant, C over S plus 30. Sorry, you, you need to review partial fraction expansion if you didn't um, Look at my NMath A course. Um, now we need to find the A, B, and C. And since these are all simple, real roots, we can use the cover-up method for each one of them. So A will over S, so cover up the S here, then evaluate the rest at S equals uh, zero, whatever makes the denominator zero. So it'll be 50 over six times 50, or 10 times 30, there, just one. And that's what A equals. What is B? We'll cover up its factor, which will be the S plus 10, and evaluate the rest at S equals minus 10. Here's, here it is when you substitute that in. Here's what it is when you do the arithmetic. Minus 1.2, that's what B equals. C, you do the same kind of thing. Cover up the S plus 30, evaluate the rest at S equals minus 30. Whatever S makes the denominator 
zero are the roots that little characteristic equals. Um, there's the arithmetic, there's the result, point two. Now you need to take the inverse of the plant tree. This one is just one over s. That's a constant. And let's see, these other guys are like an s plus a. S plus a, like this, or s minus a. S plus a, it's e to the minus a. The signs are going to be opposite. So for those latter two terms, this is the term in the table we're using. Inverse Laplace transform becomes this guy. 1 minus 1.2 e to the minus 10t, 0.2 e to the minus 30t. Okay. And if you look at, take the limit as t goes to infinity, these two guys go to zero and you're just left. So that's the case of the cover-up method. How about this looks just slightly different. I think we just changed these two numbers, from 40 and a 300 to 30 and a 250. Um, here, you get a quadratic term on the, in the denominator um, with complex conjugate roots. Um, there we leave a quadratic of the denominator, and what we put up in the numerator is, is a linear term, one, one less harder than the denominator. Instead of just a constant up here, it's an S plus another constant. Here we have to use the equating numerators method. You'll get, try to put all this over, or don't try, put all this over a common denominator. So have A times this denominator plus this times that denominator. This. Multiply that out and, and, uh, and, and group it in order of powers of s. And all that has to equal this numerator, 5s plus 2. So now you equate, you're equating powers of s. A plus B has got to be equal to zero because there is no S squared term in the numerator. 30A plus C needs to equal five. And 250A needs to equal 250. Have those three equations and three unknowns and you find your A, B, and C. Here is what the output is in the Laplace domain. Or here is what it is. Now we have to use a trick with when you have quadratic things. Um, this is a review of Laplace transform. Take half of this term, so that's 15. S plus 15, that's what gets squared. Um, so the arithmetic's pretty rough here. 15 squared, what is that? It's 225. Need another add another 225 for this 250. And in the numerator, I want a term that matches this term here. So I need an S plus 15, but I need to add another 10. So now I can break up this term. I'll take the S plus 15 and then the 10. I have a 10 in the numerator. What I want in the denominator is the square root of whatever this term is. Here's what we're doing. We're trying to use these two transform, these two transform pairs to do the inverse Laplace transform. So I want a five up here, so I make up for it dividing by five. So this just ends up being a two. Look up what these two guys are in the table and their cosine and sine. So here's the final answer. You'll get oscillation in the answer and a decaying exponential envelope. Um, 
for you. That's a super quick review of how to use Laplace transform to. One more subject in this module will be the final value theorem, and I'll save that for the next.